Hi everyone, and welcome to this video on React development. I'm here to share my experience and knowledge with you on some of the most common questions asked during a React interview. Every answer contains multiple concepts and make sure to cover them all. So, let's dive into the first question. What inspired you to become a React developer, and how did you get started with it? Well, I was really drawn to React because of its focus on building reusable UI components and its ability to improve the performance of web applications. I started learning React through online tutorials and courses, and then began working on personal projects to gain more experience. Can you explain the React component lifecycle, and when would you use each method in the lifecycle? The React component lifecycle refers to the sequence of methods that are called when a component is created, updated, and destroyed. Some examples of lifecycle methods include component did mount, component did update, and component will unmount. The specific lifecycle methods that you use depend on the requirements of your application, but it's important to understand the purpose of each method and when to use it. How would you optimize the performance of a React application? Can you give some examples of performance optimization techniques? To optimize the performance of a React application, there are several techniques you can use, including code splitting, lazy loading, memoization, and virtualization. For example, code splitting involves dividing your application code into smaller chunks that can be loaded on demand, which reduces the initial load time. Lazy loading involves loading resources only when they are needed, which reduces the amount of data that needs to be loaded at once. Memoization involves caching the results of expensive function calls to reduce the number of calculations needed. And virtualization involves rendering only the visible parts of a list, which reduces the amount of DOM manipulation required. Can you explain the difference between props and state in React, and when would you use each one? Props and state are two ways to manage data in a React application. Props are read-only data that are passed from a parent component to a child component, while state is mutable data that is managed within a component. You would use props to pass data down to child components, and state to manage data within a component. How do you manage state in a large React application, and what strategies do you use to prevent state management issues such as prop drilling or context confusion? To manage state in a large React application, it's important to follow best practices such as using container components, using a state management library like Redux or Mobex, and avoiding prop drilling or context confusion. Container components are components that manage the state of child components, which reduces the complexity of managing state. State management libraries provide a centralized way to manage state, which makes it easier to access and modify data. And avoiding prop drilling or context confusion involves passing data directly to the components that need it, rather than passing it through multiple levels of components. Can you give an example of a complex problem you solved using React, and how did you approach it? One example of a complex problem I solved using React was optimizing the rendering performance of a large data visualization application. I approached the problem by using virtualization to only render the visible parts of the data, memoization to cache expensive calculations, and lazy loading to load data on demand. By using these techniques, I was able to significantly improve the rendering performance of the application. Can you explain how React hooks work, and how you would use them to refactor class-based components into functional components? React hooks are functions that allow you to use state and other React features in functional components. Hooks include use state, use effect, use context, and many others. To refactor class-based components into functional components using hooks, you would need to replace the lifecycle methods with use effect, manage state with use state, and use other hooks as needed. This allows you to write more concise and reusable code. How do you handle errors and exceptions in a React application, and what are some best practices you follow? To handle errors and exceptions in a React application, it's important to use a combination of error boundaries, error logging, and error reporting. Error boundaries are React components that catch errors in their child components and display a fallback UI. Error logging involves logging errors to a server or other data store for analysis. And error reporting involves notifying users of errors and providing guidance on how to resolve them. Some best practices to follow include logging errors with as much detail as possible, handling errors gracefully, and providing clear error messages to users. Can you explain the difference between Redux and Context API, and when would you use each one? Redux and Context API are both state management solutions for React applications, but they differ in their approach and use cases. Redux is a centralized state management library that provides a predictable and consistent way to manage application state. Context API, on the other hand, 
is a React feature that provides a way to share data between components without having to pass props down the component tree. You would use Redux for large, complex applications with a lot of shared state, while Context API is best for small to medium-sized applications with relatively simple state management needs. How do you approach testing a React application, and what tools and libraries do you use for testing? To test a React application, it's important to use a combination of unit tests, integration tests, and end-to-end -end tests. Unit tests test individual components or functions in isolation, while integration tests test the interaction between components or services. End-to-end -end tests test the entire application from the user's perspective. Some tools and libraries that I use for testing include Jest, Enzyme, React Testing Library, and Cypress. It's important to write tests that are reliable, maintainable, and cover all critical functionality. Well, that wraps up our discussion on React development. I hope that this video has provided some valuable insights into the world of React and what it takes to be a head React developer. Our mission is to give people resources to become a web developer by project-based path and get a job for free. Thank you for watching, and best of luck in your own React development journey.